Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. I've already done a video on WireGuard for the UDM SE, but today we're gonna do a video for WireGuard with UID. UID version cloud 0.58.2 brought WireGuard VPN to the free basic tier of UID. So we'll get WireGuard set up. I'll show you how to use it with your client and then we'll run some tests. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do so is to subscribe. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. And if you'd like to hire me for network consulting, you'd visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. Before we get into the configuration of WireGuard for UID, you need to have the UI client downloaded on the computers or the phones that you want WireGuard to use, and you could associate that to different users. So you need to log into your UID manager. On the left-hand side, we'll see this downloads tab, and then we can see that we have UI for Apple, Android, Windows, and Mac. We also have UI Verify for the same. Now I'm gonna click on Applications and we're gonna get into my workspace. We can see here that I have the UID Manager Portal and this is gonna ask me to authenticate because I have the two-factor authentication turned on. Let me show you the UI app and that we don't have the VPN currently associated to this user. If I go down to my Windows pane and click up, we can see I have UI. We'll click on that and you can see on this dashboard, I only have Approvals and Help Desk. Once we associate the VPN to this user, it will pop up. I'm under my Mac Telecom Network's UID site, and we can see that we have this one-click VPN and it's not configured, so we'll click on it. Now it's asking us to set up a one-click VPN. If you click the one-click VPN setup guide, this will bring you to instructions on how to do it. We're not gonna use that, we're gonna press set up. Now it's saying set up one-click VPN. It's asking for a VPN name, it's asking where to deploy it, which will be on my Mac Telecom SE, and then we have two different options for types. So we have OpenVPN and now we have WireGuard. So I'm gonna select WireGuard and we can see it says sync with your public IP of the Unify OS console and I'm gonna check that off. If I didn't have a static IP and it was dynamic, it would automatically change for me. The protocol for WireGuard will be UDP and then we could show advanced options. We could specify which gateway we want this to use and I'm gonna do that. So I'll put it 192.168 66.1/24 and I'm going to give it a couple DNS servers of 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8. We could also add a DNS suffix or we could add custom routing. I'm just going to leave those at default and then press next. So now it's saying secure your VPN with Adaptive VPN. If you do want to see what Adaptive VPN is, I do have a video about it and I'll put it in the link below. It's really just multi-factor authentication for your VPNs. Now the WireGuard VPN is set up, but we still need to add users. So on the left-hand side, we could go to assignments. Under assignments, we could see that no one's been added. And in the right-hand corner, we could assign a user. Now we could search the user by name, or we could do it by groups. If we want to add my full Mac Telecom group, we could do that. I'm just going to search it by user. Now I've selected my user and we can see that that user is on the right hand side, Cody McCallum, and we're going to press OK. Before we get connected to the WireGuard VPN, let me show you how we're going to test. On my UDM SE side, which is hosting my UID, we have the UDM SE and that's going down to an aggregation switch and then we have a Synology NAS plugged into that. These are all 10 gig links going up to the SE and the internet connection is 1 gig by about 60 upload. The Synology NAS is gonna be acting as our iPerf server and it's on 192.168.10.220. On the other side, we'll have our WireGuard tunnel up and I do have a separate ISP and that's directly connected to this computer right now at one gig by one gig. Now looking back down at my Windows pane, we could open up the UI app and we could see that we now have the WireGuard VPN there. We could turn it on just by hitting this toggle switch. In the UI app, we have settings that we could do for the VPN. So we could click on the settings wheel and then go to VPN settings. Here we could see we could connect to either global or intranet. The different VPN policies for global, it routes all traffic on the client to the VPN server network. For the intranet, it routes only the traffic destined to the VPN server's intranet, and it still uses the client's network. Currently, we're using the global VPN policy, and let's run a speed test. Okay, and we're getting 51.37 down and 52.50 up. Now I'm going to switch the policy to be intranet, and let's see what we get. So I'll click down on my Windows pane, we'll open up the UI, and we'll go to my settings wheel. We'll scroll down to VPN settings and then change it to intranet. We can now see that the VPN is connected, so let's run that speed test again. And we can see that the intranet speeds are a lot higher. It's 669 down and 2342 up. I had forgotten that I did switch my internet currently to 3 gig by 3 gig, not 1 by 1. 
which this computer is on and it's connected to a 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface. So now let's test to see if we could hit internal resources like my Synology NAS while we're on the VPN. Currently I'm still on that intranet connection and I'm gonna ping 192.168.10.220, which is my Synology NAS. And we are able to hit that. So now we're gonna do some iperf test. Now we're gonna run it as a client, then we'll do a reverse. So we'll do dash C and then towards my Synology NAS 192.168.10.220. And you can see we are getting 70.3. So now let's do it in the reverse. And we're getting 52.7. And that's really not too bad. I was expecting the wire guard to be a little bit faster, but it has been stable. I've been using this for quite a while. I just ran another test using the global policy and it's roughly the same. We are getting 65.9 and we are also getting 52.4. The next step we need to do, we need to make some firewall rules so that this WireGuard VPN can't get to all of my networks. Currently, we could get to everything, my cameras, my IoT, and we really wanna lock this down. I'm just gonna lock it down to my Synology NAS. So now I'm in my UDM SE and we need to create a profile. We're gonna look at this RFC 1918 profile first because you do need to have that in here to make this work. So the RFC 1918 is a white paper on IPv4 addresses. So the first one is 192.168.0.0/16. The second one is 172.16.0.0/12, and the last one is 10.0.0.0/8. Now we want to make one with the WireGuard subnet in it. So we're going to go to Create New Port IP Group. This is going to be called WireGuard Network, and then we're going to create this as an IPv4 address subnet. I'm going to put in the subnet that I use for the WireGuard, which is 192.168.66.0/24, and then we'll press add and apply the changes. Now that we have that group created, we need to go over to firewall and security. Under firewall and security, we're going to create a new rule. The type is going to be LAN out. And if you want me to do another video explaining what all these different types are, let me know in the comments. The first description will be to block WireGuard to all networks. The action will be to drop and the source will be a port IP group of the WireGuard network that we just created. And this just has the WireGuard subnet in it. Next, we're gonna have our destination of a port IP group of RFC 1918, which is all the private IPv4 addresses and we'll press apply. So now if we go to a command line, we won't be able to hit my Synology NAS. So I'll ping 192.168.10.220 and we can see that the requests are timing out. So the next rule we need to put in is an accept rule for WireGuard to be able to get to the Synology NAS. So we'll go back to my firewall, we'll create a new rule. The type again will be LAN out, and we'll say WireGuard allowed to NAS. This time that it will be to accept, the source will be the same of the WireGuard group or the WireGuard network, and the destination, I'm just gonna put a single IP address. This IP address will be 192.168.10.220, and then we'll press apply changes. But as you can see, if we do a consistent ping, this still isn't going to work because our firewall rules are done in order from top down. And currently the blocking rule is at the top, and then the accept rule is on the bottom. So we need to drag and drop that accept rule up. I'll leave this ping going and we will see the responses soon. So we'll go over to LAN. We'll scroll down and we could see block WireGuard to all networks. What we need to do, we need to grab the WireGuard allow to NAS, grab it, pull it up, and now it is above that blocking rule. And if we go back to the ping test, in a moment, it should start replying. And as you can see, we're getting ping reply, so it is working. So that's gonna be it for this video on UID WireGuard. I really like the integration with UID. It makes it very simple to give your clients VPN access to different resources on your site. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.